Hello everyone, and welcome back to a new episode of West of Loathing. Last time we left off, we did a few things, but I didn't really have much time to do much. I remember going to Reboot Hill and just frankly turning around, because I was like, eh. Off to one side of the desert trail, a skeleton is sitting in the shade of a rocky ridge. Looks like some poor traveler must have succumbed to the heat. As you move closer to an investigator, it appears that the skeleton is holding a book. As you get close enough to see that's a copy of the Longfellow translation of Dante's Divine Comedy, Notice that the skeleton is in fact reading it, turning the pages and making little notes in the margins of the pencil. Excuse me, you're in my light. Ah! Talking skeleton. <sighs> Sorry. Took me by surprise. Ask her about about her book. Fine comedy. About heaven and hell and so on, right? Mm-hmm. Is it accurate? Making corrections. Uh keep talking? You no, know, most skeletons I meet just sort of hiss and attack me. Because you won't leave them alone, alone while they're reading? And there's more because of them being rabid, mindless automatons. Might find out how rabid I can be if you don't stop bugging me. Uh... I don't want to fight you. I don't want to fight you. You're just, you're just vibing, reading a book. Leave. Get back on your horse and leave the skeleton to her reading. Yeah, I'm, I'm good. That just seems mean. All right, back to this place. So let's see if we can solve what in the world is going on here now that I have a little bit more time. So um, let me just refresh on all of this and see. Wait a minute, all of these say Smith. Wasn't that the, wasn't, wasn't that the last name of the thing I found? I think it was at the ranch, right? Um, the charred black skeleton starts clacking towards me. Oh, okay, there's three of them. Ah! Jeez. Yeah, I think... I think Smith was what it... And this this note specifically mentioned, uh... Let me, uh... Let me buff up. Um... I think this note specifically mentioned, too, that they liked knitting. So I'm wondering if this was actually it? Maybe. Because I could have sworn Smith was the name too. I don't know. Let's 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 go see though. So we'll kill you. Ah, I should have attacked the other one. It's fine. The charred skeleton's a little bit more difficult though, but it's fine. I'm stinky. Uh, skull chips, gold tooth. All right. So in here. And it was the dormitory? Wasn't it in, like, one of the lockers? Yeah. Blank Smith, it was! First name's- first name has worn away, but you can tell it has fewer than eight letters. Okay. Fewer than eight letters, good. Sadly, the contents aren't particularly juicy. She found the ranch to be pretty boring and appreciated like of blah blah blah. Knowledge death, but the author I guess she forgot the diary and left. And yeah. She did plenty of time knitting, which was her favorite hobby. Yeah, this must be the same person. It even... Yeah, it even gives me a little hint there. Okay. You can tell it was fewer than eight letters. Cool. Alright, so... Fewer than eight letters is mostly what I get from that. Um, and then I can pair that with all of the other knowledge that you give me. The thrilling whoosh sound and a man dressed up in dark gray with a long fluffy... Loke in a gray bandana pulled up to conceal his face. Here's before you out of the shadows. He brandishes a wicked looking knife at you accusingly. Stop right there. Prove your allegiance or I'll suffer no cultist in this place. To be more specific. A necromancer cultist. Skeleton guys. Protest. Bah, you accuse me of being the minion of some warlock? I serve no man. I bow to no man. I'd sooner pursue, forsake my own life than forsake my freedom, Sarah. And furthermore... Okay, I get it. You can pass. Good. All right, let's see if we can figure this out. Okay, I think I know which one it is. Um, I don't have all of the information in order because uh, I can't quite remember the grandmother's age, but I think it's Melissa. So there's a few reasons. So it needs to be fewer than seven, uh, seven letters, the first name, and Melissa is seven. It needs to end in a vowel, A is a vowel. Um, you are 38 years old. So, let's go over here and talk about some of the other things with you. So, first name ended in a vowel. We know that it needs to be fewer than eight letters. 
Um, I was 40 when she was born. This is the one I'm not super sure about because I don't remember your age. So I don't know how this adds up, but if if it if 38 is the correct one, then that would make you 80, which might be the case because you said or was it 42? All right, first name is longer than their last. Melissa is longer than Smith. Um, I remember she wasn't buried next to any of my daughters. I think I know what this means, but I'm not positive. Um, and then she passed at the same age as poor, poor Becky, who was always in such ill health. And then, yeah, knitting. So she wasn't buried next to any of my daughters. I, th I think all the daughters are Beckys. Like, because we have a few of those. We have little Becky Smith. Then we have uh, penultimate Becky Smith. And if we look at them, you're supposed to be the same age as some of them. So we're looking for one of them that's 38. So you're obviously not 38. You're not 38. And then I think there's a mezzo over here. Mezzo Becky Smith, you're not 38. Um, and I think it's first Becky Smith. You were 38. You were 38 when you died. So first Becky Smith, that matches. And also since these are your daughters, I believe, you can't be near any of these. If we go look over here, there's no Beckys near Melissa. So I think Melissa's the, the, the one. I've been sitting here Pouring over these facts. I was about to pull up my video to see what your age was specifically um, When you when you mentioned it at the beginning, but uh, I think that's enough information to go off of I think I think I know Let's let's do All right granny's face lights up as you nervously glance at the tombstones behind her did her name start with a M Raise hopefully was it meh? Granny's eyes widen Melissa. Granny's eyes brighten, and she bursts into tears, but happy ones this time. Oh yes, of course, how could I have forgotten? Poor sweet Melissa, oh how I miss her, good. Oh my god. That took me a bit, that took me a bit of just like looking around comparing them, but the fewer than eight, um, thing definitely, definitely helps. <laughs> because that helped me narrow it down to Melissa, and I was kind of thinking, I was looking for characters with names with seven, because it's, if it specifically said fewer than eight, I was thinking it was probably going to be seven. Because a lot of the names were five. But that particular fact alongside the their first name has to be longer than their last name and it has to end in a vowel helps cut out a lot of them. So Granny drifts grifts uh oh my god. Grifts over to her tombstone? No. Drifts over to her tombstone and gently places a bouquet at the base. Both Granny and the flowers fade away into nothingness, that is, except for a single flower that remains. Plus eleven spell damage. It's sad when flowers die with unfinished business. Goodbye, Granny. Alright, we did it. Oh, Alright, so... <laughs> I, may, I could not have done that last time. There's no way. It, it, took, it took too much time. I knew it was going to take a bit. But... Alright, we haven't looked at this side, right? Rebecca Smith... Billy Spider McKinley turned out to be way more than one. Why is old Jed Marmot? This time the bar ate him. Ground here seems reasonably soft. Dig it up! Marmot skin cap. Seven pistol attack damage. This hat's original owner was a crack shot, but he lost his gun in a card game and got eaten by a bear almost immediately afterwards. Peggy Immortal. Kinda ironic. Biff Bunkerston. He was a real butt face. Big Bob Hurlingham. Gone to the big pie eating contest in the sky. The ground here is reasonably soft. I got a tripe pie. Ew. Uh, pie crust filled with intestines. It just goes to show one man's nightmare garbage is another man's dinner. This is my muscle by five. Okay, Snidely Crandlesworth. He was sort of like a Benjamin Button kind of thing. Also, 1800 to 1700. <laughs> Clean Willie Hinks. Really is gonna hate this burial thing. Annette Cintabalm. Tried to eat her way out of a bear. Buck Jeansley. Nobody ever saw a man die that way before. Looks like there's a whole gang buried here. Wait in. Oh, they're quick. Okay, they whiff though. Oh, no, that one needs to go. That one needs to go. And this one. Oh, they need to go. Reduce the muscles of all enemies. Okay. Okay, they're actually kind of scary. Um, 
Wait, I thought I had the ability to summon a... A Skeleton. Is that not listed here? Do I need... Am I, like, full-on skills? Do I need to equip it? I, I thought I got that, right? I thought I did. Huh. Weird. Uh, alright. Let's muscle. <clears throat> and then... 39 to 50 damage to a row. Hmm. What items could I use here? I gain 1 AP, poison, target will get wet. Weakening it and making it flammable. Set the target on fire. I'm not poisoned. Hmm. Okay, I think what I want to do... <clears throat> I think what I want to do is... I have all this dynamite. Throw some dynamite at you. Throw more dynamite at you. I'm, I'm... I'm throwing a lot of dynamite at you. Gore is gonna do... 39 to 51 damage. I kinda wanna make sure that character dies. There. Okay, and then for you... I wanna do a similar thing. Because they need to go. Yes, I have a lot of dynamite, so... <laughs> Uh, act activates my Elvi Brother drone. Okay, so now we gore this lane. What I could do is moo, but that takes my turn. No. All right, so we're gonna gore this lane. That dork is dead. The ones that buff are gone. And trying to shoot. Oh, but it'll hit Elaine Sweet instead. Okay, let's stun you. Okay. I mean, I could have defeated the entire counter by just spamming dynamite, but that's boring. I needed dynamite to help out with that, or I was just gonna die here. But we should be able to pull this off now. 56. I'm just- I'm just gonna hit you. Yeah. Just gonna finish things off that way. Um... Brutus. Okay, we're good because they're going to whiff. You are going to hurt me though. Or no, uh, y you're gonna hurt me, not you. <clears throat> All right, so the one in the middle, Guinevere Sweet. Kablamza, blamza, blamza. That attack is terrifying. All right, I think we've got it though. I don't think there's any way we, uh, are gonna be dying here today. Kablamo. Alright. Thank you, Dynamite. If they would've kept buffing, we would've been in trouble. We would've been in trouble. Here lies the sweet gang. May they never wake up. Take the sword. Sweet sword. You plucked the sword from the stone, now you're royalty. Now it adorns the face of your enemies briefly, plus six moxie. I mean, good if I ever need to buff my stats. That's the main thing. Alright, so... Extra plots. Shank Weems. We're reasonably sure he's dead. Uh, Dink Scotch Turkinson? Drowned in a whiskey barrel. It's what he would have wanted. The ground here seems reasonably solid. Pick it up. Decent whiskey. Increase your muscle by five. Cool. Took us kind of a long time to get around to this. Old dead Tom. Oh no! <laughs> Fred Deeks couldn't remember the rhyme about which snakes are poisonous. The ground here seems to be soft. Patent anemic. Died as he lives, screaming. Near old flints. Annette Jangle. First lady bicyclist to ride off a cliff. Riding boots. Mm, I might want the speed, honestly. At this point. It gives me one AP. I just lose out on a little bit of AP, but I gain the speed. But if I take off my spit-soaked boots, then I'm one less spit item. I have Blech, Scalibur, and the Revolting Brooch, but... My boots... They're so spit-filled. But I do want the speed, because things are kind of bopping me with that extra speed right now. Lavender Crinks, inventor of the external combustion engine. Pains of a picnic. Gothic cameo? Plum pudding and instant grits. Okay. Thank you. Who was picnicking in the, uh, graveyard? 
Who was doing that? Why? Vernon uh, Pensacord. I mean, we got a we got a we got a gothic thing. Ordinately carved uh, brooch with a jet black gem in the center. Which, come to think of it, might be jet black because it is in fact a jet. Jet's a cool gem. All right, professional sword swallower. Dynamite gem fresco. All the bits we could find. <clears throat> Stimstam is big and fancy and has a door? Inside there's a document and a weird metal object. Read. The document describes a... Tontine. The burial wishes of Chet Busterly in a weird sequence of letters. What? Huh. I mean, I'll put the weird sequence of letters. Weird... Sequence... In... Grave. E T L I T R. Okay. Uh, take the object. Pick up the object. It looks like a fragment of a broken key. You found it in the fancy tombstone in Reboot Hill. Weird. Um, big and fancy and has a door. Pick the lock. Read the document. Document contain uh, burial wishes of Sam Feathersmith. Um. Another weird sequence in grave. In grave. O H L G H E. And I'm gonna also put Sam Feathersmith. And I'm gonna get the name for the other character too. Another key fragment. Okay, so. So this is Chet Busterly. Chet. Buster Lee. Buster Slee. Boom. Alright. Leave. Nope, leave. What are you? Safe Kraken. There's a safe embedded in it. Okay, I don't know what those two things mean quite yet, but. Uh. Paletta Fink, Territorial Scoffing Champion. Those are bones. Paulette Tootsbury. Died of a disease we don't have a name for yet. Skull Chips. Based on the contents of the coffin, you'd have called it Exploding Skull Syndrome. And Xavier J. Horndog. Run for mayor. Ran for mayor right off a cliff. Gina Slap Radish. Ate too many wasps. Lucky Vinnie Pike. It's bound to run out sooner or later. <laughs> You're not even dead yet. Uh, Hazel Batchley embroidered herself to death. That one guy, you know the one, yeah him. Brad Haggins, the most strikingly rat-faced man any of us had ever seen. And Stanrietta Minkleston, tried to eat a live eagle on a dare, the ground here seems reasonably soft. Loose teeth, looks like the eagle knocked out all of her teeth on the way down, yeah. Skeleton doesn't seem particularly threatening, apart from being a general reminder of your own mortality. Hello, who are you? Name's Bernard, but shh, oh, your voice still hear us. Oh, the cultists? Shh, yes! Not a fan. Reanimating dead people's skeletons. I don't want to be reanimated, it sounds horrible. Can you imagine? Having to walk around without your skin on? How embarrassing, not to mention cold. Sure, well... Must I mean, dying's hard enough. Who wants to come back to life when you just got used to being dead, right? I could see that. Can you do something? I don't want them to find me. I'll let you know when it's safe. Thanks! Okay. I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna walk on my hands over here. Boom. You know, these things are kicking my ass a little bit. Maybe we should have, um, some more tuna, yeah? I was kind of getting bopped by those previous enemies, so... Can of tuna. Let's eat it. Oh, wait, you open the can with your teeth and eat the contents just like eating an egg. Yeah. <laughs> you get an effect O for tuna. Yeah. Thank you. I got it. You found a nutritious meal of preserved seafood, and you're ready to take on the entire world, just like a tuna would be if it was still alive. Uh, you're not going to get past this barrier of whirling bones without, well, making it so there's no barrier of whirling bones. Crush them. Those bones attached to nothing are no match for the ones attached to your muscles. Alright, cultist. Susan Boingstrom, buried with her treasure collection of dog ears. These cultists look like they're barely maintaining control over that skeleton. Wait and see what happens. 
You hide behind a tombstone and wait. After a few moments, the skeleton arrests itself from the cultist's control and goes on a rampage. Bone and teeth, bones and teeth fly everywhere, and none of them belong to the skeleton. If that gives you any indication of how the fight turns out. Seemingly satisfied with the carnage it has caused, the skeleton scratches something into the ground and shuffles off to the south. <laughs> I just let them die. Grutch. I just let them die. Yeah, I mean, well, I mean, I was gonna kill them too, but it's funnier if somebody else does it. Frightening topics in next mix. Um, oh no, Ray Skeletal Thrall was the next level I was gonna get from next mix. I could have sworn I had read enough of these to get like another ability just besides the one that I have. I mean, it gave me white hair, which is just minus three moxie. Grutch. This is what the skeleton wrote. Must be its name. Okay. Add it. Spooky skeleton is named Grutch. Beautiful. The Thed Vroom. Nothing left but bones and teeth. Peninsula Wackersley. Nice lady, but a really unfortunate name. Yeah. Requires stench resistance. Hastily constructed, very shallow privy. Alright, um... Let me get my flowers, don't you worry. Uh... I need the thing... Here we go. Flowers, where are my flowers? These flowers turned out to be the most useful thing I got. And I, it's all because I just bought some flowers from, uh, from a girl at the beginning. It's here, in equipment. What am I doing? There we go. Sweet smell and flowers. Uh, you open the door and dig around the detritus, you, uh, find a little square piece of paper. The magic word written on it, per security practice. Examine. The note says, Abracadaver. That's gotta be important. You stick the note in your journal. Okay. Well, let's put my, uh, my good stuff back on, please. So, my large plush bear. Yeah. Alright, nothing in here but three uh, bedrooms, or bedrolls, and a single stale smell. Okay, well the, the cultists are gone. <clears throat> My friend Grutch took care of them. You know. Uh, they're animating dead people, I don't want to be... I took care of them already. Great, phew. It's a load off my mind, let me tell you. Here, you can have this worry stone, I don't need it now. Is, this rock has a has had a hole rubbed in it by incessant wearing. Fidgeting with it will stop you from looking so anxious all the time. The item gives you your offhand plus six moxie. Okay, I'll take it. I will definitely take it. So out of here, I guess. Cause yeah, there wasn't really anything else going on there. It said you went off to the south. There's nothing more there. I don't suppose Grutch is, uh, hanging out anywhere around these parts. Probably not. Just, uh, taking a quick peek. I don't- I don't think there was a grave that specifically said Grutch. But... I want to check just to be sure. I feel like I would have remembered that name. Yeah, that's the Sweet Gang. I mean, I wonder if you just went back in the ground. Or if you're just out there in the world now and I can find you somewhere. And these are all the smiths. Alright. Cool. We're pretty much done, I think, with this area. As I skate across here. Alright, so... I think that's good. And I think I... I think this is an episode... I did cut out a lot earlier. But we've been recording for like 40 minutes. Hmm. Am I forgetting anything? You might want to consider recovering the yeast. Okay. Yeah. Uh, so we're pretty much done there. Said you went all somewhere to the south. Don't know where you would have went. We do have a few things to return to the petting cemetery. Front yard, a small abode. You see one working on a broken water pump. Oh. I don't have 30 mysticality. Should just eat more. But I'm just trying to save my one final slot of stomach in case I need something else. You know? 
I guess I could drink, like, some of this stuff. In terms of how many potions you can use, alcoholic drinks. Like, if we drink that... There we go. That went up. What other food items do I have? Is your item drop bonus? Muscle? Cures poison? Spell damage? I don't really make potions. So... I mean, I can make the decent tequila, or I could drink the decent tequila. Yeah, sure, let's do that. Yay! I have- I have had two alcoholic drinks. I still have space in my spleen. One of the things I remember taking... <clears throat> ...was considered a potion and I didn't think it would be. But it super was. Um... Wait, what is this? Oh yeah, I can do this to... Melee damage, range damage... Spell damage... I want the armor. Yeah, I forgot I never actually did that. Oh, I didn't check what you were gonna be, the jackrabbit. I know I have another skeleton, don't I? Did I already return it? I guess it was was it the owl skeleton? I thought I had like a an ape skeleton or something. Huh. God, I have way too many items. Yeah, desert ape skeleton. Huh. I guess it just doesn't go here. Let's, uh, talk to you. Oh, no, yeah, okay, no, that's what- I can't put it on myself. Notice you're missing pack rap. Some damn fool hippie stole it. No idea what they want it for. Uh, there's a reward for anyone who recovers it. Sure, I'll get it. Uh, the hippies are holed up in the Fort of Darkness. Um... So, miss missing buffalo? Never actually had a buffalo, but they set the pedestal up just in case. You can find me enough buffalo bones for a whole skeleton, I'll buy them off you for 50 meat. Only 50? That could be up to 10 years worth of membership, assuming you don't smoke too much or in bed. Here's a list of parts. There's a place called the Buffalo Pile to the east. It'd probably be your best bet. Okay. And, uh... Missing ape. Yeah, that ridiculous fool Kellogg stole it for use in anatomy lessons. I tried to tell him it's stupid to use an ape skeleton to teach human anatomy, especially when there's plenty of actual human skeletons out in the desert for free. He just could, he just wouldn't hear it though. Listen, I'll give you 50 meat to go and steal it back. 50 meat for a burglary? Hey, recovery, not burglary. And heck, that's a year of membership paid back. Maybe as many as, well, you look like a risk taker. Three? Okay, I'll get it. Wonderful. Okay. No sorry, no sorry. I just happen to have it. Marvelous, well done. Welcome back, old friend. Puts the skeleton back on this pedestal and gives you a pouch. I mean, I guess the main benefit is that you get to use the buffs. So. Alrighty. I think we're gonna go ahead and end off there. Hope you've enjoyed, and I'll see you next time for some more.